So I was intrigued by the idea that Bill Gates had um, funded Kadama Systems $6.6 million as seed funding um, for their new business venture. And I thought, what is this all about? And it's about essentially bearing wood um, to remove carbon and essentially you'd be able to buy carbon credits in this idea that you're locking away carbon actually in the ground by digging huge holes in the ground and sealing them up so that this wood is completely sealed from um, air and water so it doesn't decompose naturally. Well, this is the theory anyway. So here's the press release from Kadama and where he says, Kadama has raised more than $6 million from the Bill Gates Climate Fund and other investors as it pursues new ways to reduce wildfire risks and lock away carbon in harvested trees. And, uh, you know, you can keep going down and reading about how they're going to uh, address wildfire dangers by essentially thinning the forest and then taking that wood, digging in, um, and burying it in the ground. Very interesting idea. But they feel as though uh, this is going to be a winner, winner, chicken dinner um, in terms of um, reducing carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So they do actually admit that the science of wood harvesting and storage is, is still evolving and that it isn't actually um, fact, if you like. But Adama says uh, that they are confident that they will be able to achieve $100 a tonne of carbon um, and reduce the net amount of carbon ultimately sequestered to about 15%. So the problem is, is I guess, you're going to end up with um, people just thinning forests um, in order to get these carbon credits. It seems to me to be very non-environmental to actually do this. It seems to be a backward form of thinking. But nonetheless, um, the company's co-founder and chief director says they plan to earn revenue from forest thinning work as well as by selling usable tin timber and carbon credits from the burial projects. And those burial projects involve burying wood. And it is that wood, um, the burial of the biomass, that they'll be able to sell off as carbon credits. If we look at uh, an article um, called Carbon Sequestration by Wood Burial, um, it describes it was all the way back in, actually, 2008, believe it or not. And uh, the abstract says, to mitigate global climate change, a portfolio of strategies will be needed to keep the atmospheric carbon dioxide concentration below a dangerous level. Here, a carbon sequestration strategy is proposed in which certain dead or live trees are harvested by collection or select selective cutting, then buried in trenches or stowed away in above ground shelters. The largely anaerobic conditions under sufficiently thick layer of soil will prevent the decomposition of the buried wood. Because a large flux of carbon dioxide is constantly being assimilated into the world's forest by photosynthesis, cutting off its return pathway to the atmosphere forms an effective carbon sink. What a wood vault might look like is in the diagram above, um, and you can see how they basically dug Essentially, it's like reverse mining where they've made a huge hole and they've put wood in it. Um, I don't know what your thoughts about that. However, not content just with these carbon um, or wood vaults, what you can have is they can say that the biomass could also be um, put in frozen sites, underwater, even in above ground shelters. Um, his earlier work found that harvesting and storing wood could potentially remove several billion tonnes of carbon dioxide a year at the cost of well below $100 a tonne. So essentially what um, they're saying is that they're trying to break the, the, carb, the natural carbon cycle by locking this wood away in, so that it can't decompose. Interesting to note, they do say in this MIT technology review that um, we have to recognise that the science of wood harvesting and storage is still evolving um, and that most importantly our understanding of what drives or doesn't drive decomposition of wood needs to be refined. 
On top of that, residents and environmental groups are often opposed to start forest thinning. Sawing down trees and removing them from steep slopes of dense forest is a laborious and costly process that would be difficult to automate effectively. Hauling around bulky tree remains and digging big holes is an expensive and requires a lot of energy. The climate emissions produced by removing, transporting and burying wood will need to be carefully tallied and counted against the total of carbon stored. So I'm just going to finish here with the conclusion from MIT Technology Review that there is risk that eventually all these efforts will create perverse incentives to remove more trees and agricultural material than necessary for fire prevention or for healthy ecosystems. After all, removing biomass also reduces the level of nutrients that forests and farms get from rotting plants. One would have thought that this was actually something quite logical, that if you create a system where people are, uh, where companies are incentivized to thin a forest and to bury biomass and sell carbon credits to do it by creating these larger wood vaults um, that are essentially forming a, a kind of reverse mining where you are digging large holes in the ground um, and covering it all with clay or whatever material in order to stop um, the wood from decomposing, that that would create um, an incentive that wasn't something that you were interested in and that is creating more green greenery, more um, things that are, are life-giving. But anyway, I'll leave it there for today.